It's a bridge to nowhere. Incomplete spans sit on either side of the Nepean River, never joined together as once planned. It's an image reminiscent of a forgotten wasteland, and yet it lies just 60 kilometers southwest of Sydney CBD. This bridge to nowhere was once planned to be part of a freight railway, and yet it is lay here, unfinished and abandoned, for 35 years. This is the story of Sydney's unfinished Malden to Dumbarton railway line. Before I continue, massive shout out to my monthly Kofi supporters. Please do consider supporting me over on Kofi if you can. I'd appreciate even a one off donation. You could buy me a coffee. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. And do check out the rest of my channel, your go to YouTube destination for all things city planning, after the video. It's the 1980s. Coal mining is front and centre of the New South Wales government's mind, but with mining for coal comes a need to transport that coal as well. Most coal in Australia was, and still is, exported overseas. New South Wales' second largest coal export port is located at Port Kembla, right here, just over 100 kilometres south of Sydney. But back in the 80s, there was a problem. Port Kembla was responsible for exporting coal from the Burragurong Valley District, Western District and South Coast District. But Port Kembla wasn't exactly easy to get to from those first two districts. There was the Unandera Mosvale railway line, but it was indirect. Road transportation was really the only other alternative, but it simply wasn't as fast or effective as rail. Rail can carry far more coal than a truck, after all. It was clear that a new, more direct rail link was needed. Several options were explored, including direct rail links, simply duplicating the Unandera Mosvale Railway to increase its capacity, and even a new dedicated road link between the districts. But ultimately, it was decided that the best option would be a 35km rail line from Malden to Dumbarton. And so, the Malden Dumbarton rail link was born. Construction on the rail link commenced in December 1983, with the elusive promise of relieving both coal traffic on roads and on other railway lines, primarily the South Coast Line. To be completely clear, the line was never planned to host passenger services. It was intended purely as a freight line, and there were no provisions for any railway stations along its route. Right now I'm in Malden, just a bit east of where the line would have started at the Main South Line. A triangular junction would have linked the line up with the Main South Line. Continuing south, the line was to cross over the Nepean River via an impressive three-span box girder bridge. Of course, we can still see what was built of this unfinished bridge today, sitting unfinished right next to the Main South Line. You're definitely wondering, why wasn't this bridge finished? Well. We'll get to that. You know we will. Let's continue down south. The railway was planned to be a single line for its entire length, other than some sidings to allow trains to pass one another. We arrive at the M31 Hume Motorway, back then referred to as the F5 Southwestern Freeway. The railway would have passed underneath the freeway. It would have then cut through open pastures on the outskirts of the Wilton Township. If you squint, and I mean really squint, you can just make out a sign erected by Transport for New South Wales that says Site of Malden Dumbarton Freight Link Corridor. In fact, if we go up into the air, we can clearly see that the corridor is still nice and neatly preserved all the way through Wilton, all the way down to Condal Park Road, back in the 80s known as Old Wilton Road. Street view indicates that there were site of Malden to Dombarden freight link corridor signs on Condal Park Road as recently as May 2021, but they were mysteriously gone on my visit in January 2023. Not sure what's going on there. Anyways, after this, the link would have passed underneath the B88 Picton Road, then known as Trunk Road 95. 
There may not be a sign on Condor Park Road, but the sign on Jandera Lane remains. It then would have continued south before entering virtually untouched bushland and continuing south to Dombarden. Okay, so we're slowly unraveling this mystery. We know that the project was unfinished, that's abundantly clear. But based on these signs and the fact that the corridor is still preserved, we know that the government still maybe wants to build a project. So what exactly is going on? The project started in December 1983 and was meant to take three years to complete at a cost of $160 million. Well, the project was approved by a Labour government, but a change in power to the Liberal Party in March 1988 sealed the project's fate. Coal prices were falling. Many of the Baragarong Valley coal mines that the rail link was meant to service were closing. Quite simply put, the tides had changed and the Molden Dombarden rail link was caught in its waves. In June 1988, Liberal Premier Nick Grainer cancelled the project, dooming it to be forgotten. This was in spite of just how much of the project had already been completed. I've already shown you the incomplete Nepean Bridge, perhaps the most infamous part of the rail link. But on top of that, a shocking two thirds of blasting and earthworks had been completed through the bush before the cancellation. It is now January 2023, 35 years since the project was cancelled. The project has remained virtually untouched for that entire time, despite so much of it nearly being completed. From above, we can see the cuttings for the Molden Dombarden, built in the 80s, remaining completely forgotten as they run through the bush. Unfortunately, the entire route of the Molden Dombarden Railway through the bush lies within what is known as the Metropolitan Special Area, an area banned to public access by Water New South Wales in order to protect water quality in the catchment. Believe me, I was very disappointed to learn this. I was so hyped to walk the railway's route. But uniquely, this means that next to no one has actually walked this majority part of the Molden Dombarden railway route since 1988, other than those willing to take the risk, and of course government workers probably. An abandoned rail project that is completely banned to public access. It feels almost dystopic, frankly. There's more photos of the cuttings online, but unfortunately they're such old photos that I couldn't get permission from the right people to use them in this video. I'll link you to those galleries in the description, and I highly recommend checking them out. Some of the pictures are truly gripping. Entering the Metropolitan Special Area, the project would have had a siding here, in Wilton, before snaking its way down to the Cordo River, crossing over a single span arch bridge. Unlike the Nepean River Bridge, this bridge never commenced construction. Continuing along the west side of the river, the railway would have continued south, with a Cordo passing loop located here, followed by an Avon passing loop. If we switch to satellite view, you can see that a significant portion of the line's cuttings are visible. The rail link was cancelled in 1988, and yet there have been plenty of attempts to resurrect the proposal. This largely revolves around the need to relieve pressure on the South Coast Line, which currently has to handle all freight from the north headed south to Port Kembla. Sound familiar? That's right, this need was the original reason the Molden Dumbarton Line was being built back in the 80s in the first place. Many studies were conducted throughout the 90s and the 2000s. Perhaps the most serious of these was a 2011 feasibility study into the project. It cited that there could be large benefits to finally finishing the line, such as allowing increased transport of freight, reducing rail and road congestion, and increased efficiency of transport on the whole. However, it did note that the project would be very costly, at 624 to 667 million dollars, six times as much as it would have cost in the 80s without accounting for inflation. Most notably, the benefit to cost ratio was a staggeringly low 0.56, 
The economic benefits would have only been 56% the costs. Ultimately, it was concluded that it would be a better option to just upgrade the Unindera Mosfera airline instead, which would only cost 125 million. So, why was it going to be so expensive to finish off the project? So much of the cuttings were already done, there was only one major bridge left over to construct. Where was all this cost coming from? Well, we now arrive at the final part of the Molden to Dumbarton rail link at Avon. The only way for the rail link to make it down the Illawarra escarpment to join up with the Moss Vale Unandera line was determined to be through a 3.5 km tunnel, which was to be the longest railway tunnel in Australia when constructed. Ultimately, only the tunnel portals were constructed, a west portal and an east portal. As you can imagine, this would have contributed to the most significant part of the cost of the project. In 2009, it was estimated to have costed $125 million to finish the tunnels. From here, the line would have joined up with the Moss Vale Unindera line. In fact, I'm at Unindera right now, and I really hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyways, that would have allowed it to continue down the South Coast line all the way to Port Kembla. But alas, the project was never finished, and the numerous attempts to resurrect the project have consistently failed. It remains as one of New South Wales' most well-known white elephant projects, in that so much of it was constructed prior to its cancellation, and now absolutely no one can actually benefit from its construction. Every few years, news articles will appear claiming that the project has been reignited, that there is renewed government desire to build the project. The New South Wales government still has its own website up for the rail link. But ultimately, despite it being well known that the increasingly congested South Coast Line needs a backup, the line is just simply not at capacity, yet. This is largely the reason for inaction on the Molden Dumbarton Line. It's the project that is so close to being finished, and yet it is just not needed enough yet for anyone to bother. So, is there light at the end of the tunnel? No, the tunnel was never finished, remember? Okay, fine. There might be hope yet for the Malden to Dumbarton rail link. High speed rail linking Sydney's west to the Illawarra was proposed in the Future Transport Strategy, released in 2022. Despite very little detail provided in its maps, it does appear to follow a route similar to the Malden to Dumbarton line. Perhaps the line will be finished after all, as part of Australia's first high-speed rail link. <laughs> no, let's get real. I want high-speed rail as much as the next bloke, but given the extreme lack of detail into a, such a proposal that currently exists, it's unlikely this project will be built for decades if at all. And given the significant rolling stop difference between freight trains and high-speed rail trains, it's not even a guarantee that any high-speed trains could even use the Malden Dumbarton corridor. A new corridor altogether may be needed. If I'm being perfectly honest, the only way I can see the Malden Dumbarton line being completed is as a freight line, as originally intended. Unfortunately, despite the many signs dotted around Wilton outlining the doomed corridor's route, it seems clear that the rail link is no one's priority. In the meantime, there's something truly gripping about what remains of the ghost project. The cuttings through the bush, the unfinished tunnel, the bridge to nowhere. All of it, all of the Malden to Dobarden rail link, is so fascinating. Sydney's own unfinished railway that will likely forever remain lost to time.